Okay, welcome to the second in this small session of webi mini webinars um, at the AgriBility Virtual National Training Workshop. Um, this session is launching and using your own YouTube channel. It's not loading. Okay. Um, again, just like in the last session, we're going to encourage interactivity, whether that be getting on and um, chatting questions or actually activating a microphone if you have one and asking via audio. Um, I'm going to be using the computer in real time, showing you on the web um, uh, about YouTube and how do you set up a channel. So we'll be going through and doing it in real time. Um, so I would like questions as we go. I think that when their demonstrations are given like this, that that's the best way to handle questions. Okay. I'm not doing anything. It's going to take a minute. I'm actually on the first slide. Okay, so it looks like the technology is lagging just slightly. So I'll uh, just... Okay, good. Okay, so launching and using your own YouTube channel. Our outline for this um, session, the steps to create your YouTube channel. We're going to establish that you have a Google account. So you may, some of you may already have a Google account, but if you don't, we're going to go through the steps of setting that up then creating your YouTube account, then um, the combination of the three uploading videos, creating playlists, and customizing your channel. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so when it comes time to actually creating a YouTube account, um, you go to youtube.com and you'll see the page pop up. Assuming you don't already have a Google account, um, it's just going to show you the page that um, everybody sees by default. So when you need to create uh, an account, it's youtube.com slash create underscore account it will take you to creating a new Google account. Because Google is such a big conglomerate and they have a bunch of different websites, Google actually acquired YouTube. So you can see here in this image, that's kind of a montage of Google, Google technologies. Um, Google has Gmail, Google Plus, YouTube, um, Google Maps. So they want you to create one, one Google account so that you can access all of these different technologies. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Google account here. Now I already have one, but I'm going to go ahead and create one just for this demonstration so you can see how that's done. I'm going to put in my name as Clifford Raz. And I'm going to choose a, a Google username and I can do ntw um, dot test dot account. There we go. And then I'll create a password. I'll put in my birthday as January 1, 1950. I'll be really old. I'm a male. Can't even read that. Okay, so I filled in all my information. Go to next step. Yeah, I didn't like something. Oh, oh. Um, up here you'll see I went ahead and I, uh, this, this field here for mobile phone, I'm not going to go ahead and fill that in, but if you do, 
you can use the mobile phone to verify your address. Now, I'm not sure what, what the advantages and disadvantages of doing that are, except that when you verify your account with a mobile phone, uh, YouTube will go ahead and they will increase the limit because until you, you verify your account, there's a limit to how big of a file that you can upload, a video file. So if you want to host videos, it used to be a limit of 10 minutes. So if you wanted to have a video file longer than 10 minutes, you had to go ahead and verify. Um, Google continually changes those um, changes those requirements. So um, that can change. And some of you may go ahead and start a YouTube account today, and some of you may wait six months or a year to do this. So you're just going to have to check when you actually make your account. Um, and for your current email address, if you uh, you want to use the uh, address for things like keeping your account secure, you would go ahead and put your, your address in here. Um, I'll go ahead and put in test res. I think it, I think I made it mtw.test was, was the email address I made on my own domain. So go ahead and put that in, see if that works. See, okay, and they want to go ahead and verify the address. So, um, Verify the account. Um, can I put in the, the NTW phone and have you answer that? It's a phone number. Six four. So it will go ahead and send a text message. It can receive text, correct? Okay. And we'll go ahead and send a text message, and then we have to enter a verification code. Very good. Five six three two five nine. Great, we're verified. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've created the Google account. So now Google is saying, how do you want your profile to appear? Now if you look here, um, when, we're, when you're creating your account, you can just skip this step where you can put in a profile photo, and that's the profile for all of your Google accounts, not just YouTube. That, will, that little icon or avatar will show up for all of your accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly... Um, load up the um, AgriBility logo here just for this uh, example and set that as the profile photo. You can do, you can, you can add any photo that you wish. Um, some of you may have a, a logo for your um, SRAP or for example for the arthritis um, in Ag or other Easter Seals or something. So you go ahead and put in your, your icon It'll take a minute to load up and then you're done. Now you hit next step and it will take you straight to your um, YouTube account. There's NTW test account at gmail.com is our new Gmail address. Go to YouTube and there's now registered with YouTube. So this is logged into the Google account with your own YouTube um, entry page. If you click on the name at the top, it's going to go ahead and take you to your options for your channel. Now you can see here on the left-hand side, it's going to have YouTube with different settings for YouTube itself. The My Channel, um, Video Manager to manage subscriptions and YouTube settings. On the right-hand side, you'll see... Oh. Yeah. That's the biggest I can get it. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see Google account, and there will be settings, setting options for your Google account. Um, I'm just going to be showing you how to tweak your YouTube settings. The Google account settings are going to be not just for YouTube, but for everything, and they tend to have to do with your profile. Um, okay, so in your ch in your channel, when you go to the My Channel um, option. You'll have to create your own YouTube channel, 
and then this will be available to the public. They'll be able to come here, see your channel, see your videos in the channel, or maybe videos that you link to from other um, other YouTube users, whether they be organizations or individuals. So we'll click I'm ready to continue. And now we've added the channel to our account and we're ready to go ahead and um, start uh, changing our channel settings. So here we have the ability to customize this channel, um, upload videos and create playlists from those videos. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to upload a video um, first. So I clicked on this link at the top where it says upload. Do we have a question? Okay. Where it says upload, um, I went ahead and clicked there and it takes us to this upload page. We can go ahead then and select a file from the computer to upload. Um, one of the questions that's been asked commonly is what are the formats that um, YouTube allows for videos? And that's a very good question to ask. Um, at the support page for YouTube, you can see that they specify um, several different formats that are um, well known that YouTube supports. Um, and examples here are uh, WebM files, um, MPEG-4, 3GPP, and MOV files. Um, MPEG-4 is very common now in camcorders and produced by um, uh, AgCom departments. MOV, MOV files were for QuickTime, Apple QuickTime Player that's also used on the um, Windows platform. Um, AVI files, which are audiovisual something, audiovisual interface or something. Um, MPEG -P, uh, MPEG PS, uh, M WMV, which is Windows Media Video, and FLV, which is Flash Video. So all of those formats are very commonly used. Um, but if your, your video isn't in one of the formats, it's possible that YouTube will accept it, but they may not. So you may have to do some conversion over. Um, if you don't know how to do that yourself, you can either spend some time doing research on the web or just take it maybe to your uh, ag communications department or somebody who's tech savvy and they probably can do it for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select a file from the computer um, that I used earlier. Uh, I took this video on my cell phone and it is just a, a, a proof of concept um, video here that I'm uploading. And as you can see, it's a short video, so it's already done. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a title. Oh, maybe it's not done because there are no, uh, no thumbnails. There we go. Upload complete. Okay, so you see pictures of me. Um, so I'm going to put it uh, put in a title here. Now here in the field where it says title, you also see description and tags. Um, when you put in a description and tags, either for a video or for your channel itself, when YouTube or Google search engine, when the entire internet is searched, um, the, the, the terms that are put into tags, the description, and the title all will help f uh, to make your video show up in a search. However, tags, tags tend to be very uh, short um, and they're separated with commas so that um, they kind of categorize it and fit it into the hierarchy in the search. Tags tend to be given more weight than the description itself. Um, the tags typically, if they're too specific, they uh, they, they don't necessarily help you show up because a lot of things when they're searching for tags are actually using natural language search. So they're trying to find similar type um, tags. Like for example, if you're searching for disabled farmer and somebody searches for handicapped, um, the, the smart language features might associate um, disabled and handicapped as being very similar. Where a lot of times the description, it's, it looks more for specific words. Um, so here I'm going to call this video IT Guy um, and put in um, tag, one is um, nerd. Okay, that works. So we're going to save that. Okay, now over here in category, you want to categorize. Um, here I may just go ahead and put this down as 
um, under the categories I might choose people and blogs just because this is a person. If you are putting down information, uh, a video that's related to information dissemination or maybe arthritis or um, disability technology, you may choose science and technology for the technology. Um, you may choose um, education if it's educational. Um, you, may, you may choose something else um, that's more related. So I'll go ahead and choose people and blogs because that seems to fit. Okay, save the change. And now it's saved. You can see at the bottom here it says all, all changes saved. So that's done. Now when I go back to my channel, this is actually going to show up as one of my videos in my video manager. Uh, when I click on video manager, you'll see right here, okay, uh, this summarizes my uploads and you see IT guy that is there uploaded and it's a whole five second long video. Um, if you click on that video, you'll actually be able to view the video and the video is public. Can you hear that? No? Okay, I can hear it, but you guys can't. So that's how it will show up on YouTube. It's a public video. And this um, up in the URL bar on your browser, if you just copy that uh, URL, you can paste that into an email and send it to somebody else to view. Similarly, at the, at the, uh, on the video itself, you can usually go ahead and email or send it as a link on YouTube. Uh, I don't see that uh, option right now. Okay. Now, with this video, if you want to create a playlist and add it to a playlist, um, you can do that by either going through the interface and creating a playlist, or you can go here to Uploads. I'm going to click the checkbox next to the video, and then there's a shortcut, Add to, and then you can add it to a new playlist. When you do that, then you create the playlist, which is going to be a list of videos that you want to associate with um, each other and have people view. So I might put this down as IT um, escapades and I'll create that as a public playlist and I can put a note on there that says this guy has a red coat. Great. Okay, so there's a note associated with it, and now you can see at the bottom of the screen um, that shows up as one of the videos in the interface for that playlist. Now other people then you can, uh, when they come to view your channel, they're going to see your channel playlists on on your channel, my channel. And there you go. Um, it shows up on your channel. People can browse your videos and your uploads. Um, they can clean it, click on your page. Okay. Um, now with that video, uh, yes, there's a question. This question from Kathy Mann, is this just your playlist or a public playlist? The answer to that is this is my public playlist. I can create private playlists that I don't share with the public. When I created that playlist, I made it public. And so I'll go back to the video manager to look at the playlists. And you can see here IT escapades. Um, I can go to edit that playlist. Um, And you see here under privacy that it's a public playlist. Um, I can just as easily click private and now that becomes my private playlist. Um, and only I can view those. So you can do that in the process of creating your playlist before you make them public just to make sure that all the settings are correct. Um, I hope that answers your question. There's another question. Yes, Gail up here has raised her hand and her microphone is available for a verbal question. Oh, wonderful. Hi, thanks. Um, I was wondering if there's any way to link this to your Facebook page so that whenever you load a video, it automatically goes to Facebook and people are notified. 
That's a great question. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I have <laughs> uh, I have a confession to make. I actually used to be on Facebook and I dropped that. <laughs> so I've been doing less with Facebook recently. Um, but from what I understand, YouTube and Facebook don't necessarily play nicely together, meaning YouTube doesn't like to load videos from other technologies other than YouTube. Uh, you can always post a YouTube video on your Facebook. And so I'll show you how to go ahead and do that in case no one knows. But as far as getting videos from Facebook and having them show up in your YouTube channel, I don't know. You'll have to go ahead and do some research on the web yourself. Okay, I would tend to think they probably don't do that. Um, now, I would expect that may be a little bit different with Google Plus because Google Plus and YouTube are both Google technologies. I think when you want to upload a video to Google Plus, it actually uses YouTube to do that. Great, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to movies. I think this is uh, my movies. Nope, I guess not. Sorry about that. Um, my channel. Okay, so um, uploads. We go to the IT guy video. You can see here on the video. So, um, well, anyway, um, the the link here, the YouTube video link that I highlighted in the in the URL bar of the browser. You can use that information to embed a video into your website. Um, I wasn't planning on covering that per se um, in this talk, but you can go to the YouTube um, help and you can ask, you know, how do I embed a video? Uh, I guess that didn't work there. But we can search google.com for it. Or we can add, well, here, here's the YouTube help, okay. How do I embed a video? And you'll go ahead and you will see um, there are entire YouTube help topics on how to embed videos. So you use the information from your video URL and use the um, help documentation. You'll be able to embed a video into a website and that includes including it on Facebook. Okay, finally. Um, in our last five minutes here, I'll, I'll again continue to take questions, but I want to go ahead and show you how to customize your channel. When you go to my channel, uh, you see this button here that I've highlighted, channel settings. You can go in there and you can customize the look and feel of your video channel. And then at the bottom of the screen, it will show you in real time what your channel looks like. So for example, if I was to choose a background color here of Let's say I liked um, this blue color, and I'll accept that. Then that blue color will show up in the, in the background of my channel, and we'll give it a little bit of a customization aside from the logo that I included. Now, if I want to go ahead and um, do what we did on the National Project site, which is we, put, we actually upload a, an image and use that as the background to give it more of a farm theme, um, you would do that just here using the Choose File um, as long as the file that you're uploading is less than one megabyte. I would recommend using a larger image because some of the newer computers have wide aspect ratios. I know the computer that I'm working on right now has a full um, HD screen, and so its width is like 1,900 pixels wide versus the standard right now, which is about 1,200 pixels, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200. So I'm going to choose a file here um, that I downloaded earlier that's farm related. It is called crop something or other. Cereal crops. I'm going to open that and as it uploads it was 900 kilobytes so it's smaller than a megabyte. And now I'll go ahead and I'll scroll down and you can see that the background there of my um, channel and I'll go ahead and zoom out so you can see how it looks on a computer with a uh, a larger screen, you can see that that wheat and the dark um, sky show up in the background so that it just kind of gives it a nice look and feel as an agriculturally based page, which it isn't because it's just a sample and I have IT guy on there. The Notice that the, the color that I chose as the background 
um, was a dark blue because the dark blue in this in this page in this picture here was kind of dominant as a color and um, before the image loads, especially with somebody who may not be on a very fast connection but may still possibly be di using dial-up or a slower cable modem or DSL line. Um, if you have that dark um, color load before the image and it's very similar to what the image is, it loads first and then the image loads up afterwards and so they kind of complement each other. It just gives a kind of a nice you know, feel to it. So. Um, so the, that's an example of how you can customize your page. Additionally, I'll go ahead and I'll click here on the Info and Settings tab um, that you can see I've highlighted here. Um, and that allows you also to put down a description and tags for the channel. That allows for searching in YouTube uh, and or the Google search engine or possibly even other search engines, but most people use Google. So then this will allow your channel to pop up and be used. Okay, um, now I'm going to quickly, I'm going to sign out and I'm quickly going to load up Agribility um, in YouTube so that you can see the National Agribility channel. This is how it appears to other people when we're not logged in. Um, and I'll go ahead and increase that so you can see. Well, we have the um, Agribility logo, we have the farm. Uh, themed image in the background and then you can see here we have a featured video which is also as you go into the settings um, in the video manager you can choose one of your videos to be featured so that's the, the featured video that shows up on the front page you can see here on the right hand side we have several featured playlists that we've um, put up one of which was centered around the agribility video we also have the ag what agribility means to me and other uploaded videos that we've used and then as we continue to add videos, they automatically get put on um, the default playlist and they start showing up uh, the newer the content is or if it's searched a lot, it will start to show up on the lists. Um, one of the nice things about YouTube is that as videos are viewed, it counts the views and it shows you. So like for example here on the Gaining Ground on Arthritis, um, you can see that um, it has 95 views there. So you can start to count the views and you can actually track those over time. Um, both YouTube and Google um, have uh, sections where they will actually show you over time how your traffic has increased. So, all right, well that takes us to four o'clock. Uh, I'm still, we still have a little bit of time for some more questions. Paul has some, uh, some things that he'll need to run through. Um, otherwise, that's everything. Oh, and another question from Gail Lapierre, and I will activate her microphone while he she is while I'm doing that, um, and she's asking her question. I'm going to start getting our polls ready for uh, you to respond to. So we'd appreciate you hanging around and uh, responding to those poll questions. And also, please continue to uh, either uh, type some questions into the chat window if Cliff needs to clarify anything, or um, raise your hand if you'd like to ask those verbally. Also, I would note that we are recording the session. Um, if you want to go back and review how Cliff did something, then you'll be able to uh, just scan through that video and find the parts where you would like to uh, get that refresher. Gail, I believe you're enabled now. Yes, thank you. Just was. Um, I see a subscribe button next to the Agribility channel. Now, <laughs> kind of in line with my previous question, will subscribers be automatically notified when you add a new video? Um, yes, although I'll go ahead right now. Remember, I'm not logged in with an account. So you see up here um, where it says sign in. If I click on subscri subscribe, it actually prompts me to, to log in to my YouTube account. So note that the YouTube subscribe feature is just for YouTube members. Gotcha. So they will get updates when you update videos. Um, I don't believe it transfers to any other um, social media, including Facebook or Twitter. Super, thank you. All right.
open up if you would respond to that. Again, if you're affiliated in any way with an AgriAbility project, please choose that one, even if you are part of another uh, organization that's listed. If you're uh, not affiliated with AgriAbility at all, then please choose the most suitable uh, option there. Okay, thank you for your input on that. If you could give me just a second, these were uh, just filled out in the last session, so I need to uh, record those. Okay, well. Okay, while while that was asked, I saw Steve Swain had also asked a question. Um, so I'll go ahead and sign back in. Um, and I was test. Can you remove videos? Um, can you remove? Um, can you remove videos? Right. The answer is yes. The answer However, is yes. However, um, I would put an asterisk by that and say. Um, the, the internet and the press have one thing in that common, and that is once it's out, there's a certain amount of you can't take it back. So note that even though you may remove a video from your channel, um, that doesn't mean that a copy of the video can't be somewhere on the internet. Um, so as long as you realize that, if you go to your uploads, um, I'm sorry, if you go to your video manager, and you can and you can just click and you can delete feature delete feature delete delete so if you go under, so if you go under actions and go to delete then yes delete um, you've, chosen, um, you've chosen to delete all the videos on the page, all so one of them. Um, so they want you to confirm. So double you down. double down and say yes, and skadoosh, all your videos are deleted. No, now it's very possible and probable that Google still has that somewhere mm -hmm. in the Google right. Plex, but it, it won't show up on your uh, account anymore. Cliff, along with that, uh, one question is: Is it possible for anyone to copy your video off of your YouTube site? Ah, uh, again, again. The, the, uh, the, I'll reiterate: the the press and the internet have one thing in common. That is, once it's out, um, there's a certain amount of it's out. Um, so once anything goes on the internet, it's almost for certainly uh, possible to copy. Um, in the very least, I can take my cell phone with a camera and sit here and copy it in person, just like you know, spies in the Cold War could take pictures of documents or. Um, people take bootlegs of movies and theaters. Um, so, there's a certain, so there's a certain amount of that you're never going to be able to prevent. Um, however, it's not simple. So, so you know the way that YouTube tries to control those things. YouTube doesn't, YouTube doesn't want just anybody copying the videos, but there are programs that can do it. Okay, our next poll question uh, deals with the information that was shared. If you could let us know whether you felt the information shared today was useful to you. Appreciate that to help us develop uh, future content. Okay, thank you very much for your input. The next question involves the technology that was used today. And uh, again, this is a little bit different in terms of the way we use the technology, so we'd appreciate your feedback as to whether you found it useful in terms of uh, being able to follow along with Cliff on his screen rather than just a standard PowerPoint. If you could wait for just about two seconds before okay. you respond to this, I'd appreciate it because I want the uh, 
the video to record uh, what's currently on this. So if you could hold on for just a second before responding. Okay, go ahead and respond, please. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I need to. Uh, I ap apologize. I need to open that again as a as a clean uh, uh, poll without the previous votes on it. Okay, we appreciate your input on that. And our final poll, even though this is the last in this particular series, uh, it's good for future series based on this same uh, idea. And again, if you could wait for just just a second before you start responding, I'd appreciate that, and I will re uh, I will re uh, start this poll in just a second. Okay, there we go. you stop sharing? Um, I stopped sharing. Now I'm hiding that. <laughs> 